Hey Tank Mates, Wes with Devon Aquariums, bringing you another video, another topic. This time the topic, high phosphates. Um, spoiler alert, I have high phosphates. Um, if I take a step back and you look at the tank, you can see it's very naked and very empty. The two pieces of wood that were right here uh, are gone. And my plants have pretty much wilted away. They have, they're not dying because, well, they have hair algae. They have the dreaded hair algae. And the pieces of wood had the dreaded blackbeard algae. Those are the two algaes you really don't want um, because they're a nuisance and they are a pain to get rid of. Um, with the blackbeard algae, uh, the reason why you don't see those uh, two pieces of wood is I took those out and they're actually soaking in hot water um, right now as we speak. Um, hot chlorinated water. I did not dechlorinate it because the hot water and the uh, the chlorine will actually kill off all the uh, blackbeard algae and now it's easier to scrape off. Now it's sterile, you can put it back in the tank. With the uh, hair algae, I went a little bit different route. Um, I actually used hydrogen peroxide and what that does is it kills it and a little bit more natural than what's happening with the chlorine, because chlorine's not natural in, in, or found in nature. But um, what I'm gonna do now is insert a couple of videos of the hair algae and the hair algae, and then the hair algae went after I sprayed it with uh, hydrogen peroxide. So as you can see, when you spray it with uh, hydrogen peroxide, it turns that reddish, that purple color, and that's how you know it's working, it's dying, it's killing off. Um, so now it's easier to get rid of it. Um, but let's talk about high phosphates. Um, what is phosphates? Uh, phosphates actually is a chemical compound, um, phosphorus, which is a non-metallic element. It's necessary for life and it's found in rocks um, as an inorganic phosphate. Uh, as water runs over or through it, um, the inorganic phosphates um, carries off into small amounts of uh, uh, minerals such as calcium, magnesium, uh, and phosphates. Uh, inorganic phosphates are a plant a nutrient and are taken in by plants with water uh, incorporated into organic phosphate compounds. Animals or people obtain their essential phosphorus uh, from phosphates in water and in uh, plant material. So when we eat, you know, plants and stuff um, like salad and stuff, that's where we're getting it. Um, so the reason why I'm telling you this is because phosphates are necessary, just like CO2 is to life. These are two comp uh, elements that are found in everything in life, but is also uh, everything in life needs it to flourish. 
Um, when it comes to natural waters, uh, phosphate concentration levels are approximately around 0 .0, 0 0.02 parts per million, uh, which is a limiting factor uh, for plant growth. Um, so that's where it kind of gets uh, through photosynthesis, through the sun, through CO2, and that's where um, plants really start to grow. Uh, on the other hand, high concentrations of, nu uh, of the, this nutrient can accelerate plant growth, but also algae. So, what does that mean? Um, phosphates don't directly hurt your fish at high levels, uh, but at high levels can cause problems like uh, green water, um, which green water can deplete oxygen in the tank. Um, that's really not a big issue for me because um, whether it's white cloudy water or green water, I have uh, Sun Sun canister filters, I have two of them with the UV sterilizer. And so when the water starts to get cloudy like that, I just turn those on and start uh, killing off the algae that way. But not everybody has that um, option available to them. So let's talk about uh, where does false fates come from in the aquarium? Well. That's actually very simple. That's usually from part of it's from us because um, it, it's a natural process uh, as waste breaks down. If you really think about it, um, it's uneaten food. It's the plant decaying. It's, you know, feces. It's dead fish. Uh, it's carbon, not taking the carbon out and rinsing it out. It compacts in there and actually cheaper carbon will release it back out into the tank. Um, not high quality carbon like um, Kimmy Pure Elite or um, Fluval or um, Seachem, these will not leach uh, back out into it. But you still need to clean it because you still have to remove it. Um, aquarium salts, uh, pH and cage buffers, keep that in mind too. Um, and sometimes it's, the, it's your water source itself, it's your tap water. Um, there's always going to be a little bit of um, phosphates in your water. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, but the biggest reason for high phosphates is just inconsistent um, water changes and inconsistent dosing. Um, it's not water changes with me because I do water changes literally every two weeks with this tank. Um, I do 32 gallons, which is a little bit over um, 40 uh, 40%. Um, so it's not that uh, if I'm being transparent with you guys it was because of inconsistent dosing and not cleaning out or rinsing my carbon um, so it's my fault this is the reason for the high phosphates and now I'm paying for it um, but again it's us so if you think about it the high um, inconsistent parameters or dosing um, it is the general uh, root and the cause of it so, you know, not consistently dosing with your CO2, your nitrogen, uh, your phosphates, your potassium, your iron. You know, I went to Seachem's website, printed this off, laminated it, and this is what I go off of now. So, you need to have a schedule for this, whether it's Seachem's or someone else's. You need to have a schedule, you need to be on it. Um, and actually, once you get the tank consistent with uh, your dosing, the algae will stop out competing for it because that's usually what's happening and your equilibrium to your tank will balance back out and your algae will not uh, be such a huge outbreak anymore um, so now that you know uh, what's the cause or the root of it let's talk about your target levels well if I told I told you earlier that 0.02 parts per million is usually what it is out in nature um, usually around 0.05 is where you want to be because at, at one part per million that's when algae start going to start to grow and then at two parts per million well that's considered an outbreak and that's what you got here you have high phosphate levels low low oxygen is going to happen you're going to have uh, black beard algae you're going to have hair algae um, that's considered an outbreak um, so routine testing is going to be another uh, part of your consistent uh, dosing to the tank, I would say. Um, but just remember, there's two types of phosphates or phosphorus. There's organic and there's inorganic. Um, so 
the only problem with that is, is you can only test for one of those organic or inorganic. And actually, the only one you can test for is inorganic uh, phosphates. So kind of keep that in mind. And when you're testing your water, whether it's aquarium water or your um, water changing water, you're only testing for the inorganic um, phosphate levels. So kind of keep that in mind. So how do you reduce phosphates? Um, it, first off, it just goes without saying, try not to let it get too high. Um, and how you don't let it get high? Stay on schedule with your maintenance and your water changes and your cleaning. Um, now cleaning for me is, it used to be a chore until I found out a different way um, because I run, I have sand and I don't have gravel so I just can't gravel back sand. Um, usually what I do is right before I do a water change is I have a um, circulator fan and I just go to each corner and I just start, you know, stirring this up and as it's coming up, that's when I start uh, siphoning everything out of the tank. Uh, but if you have gravel, that's going to be easier to do. You're just able to gravel back the gravel and it's just so much easier. It's just a little bit harder with sand, um, which is one of the reasons why I have um, quarries. Unfortunately, quarries are like rabbits. I started out with six, now I have 26 in here. Um, Another way to reduce it is a large water change, but remember that's just a temporary fix. And if you do use uh, the large water change method, um, I would use some type of phosphate um, absorber or phosphate, um, really there's, I think it's just an absorber, that's all, all you can have. So I would try with that, um, some type of phosphate absorber, and then take that out on the fourth day and then test your water. You may have to do it again if you want to go this route. Um, the next one is your tank cleaning. Again, scrub the algae on your glass. Uh, remove the wood, your rocks, place it in a bucket with uh, warm water. Uh, but don't dechlorinate it. Let that warm water and that uh, chlor chlorine kill off your algae. That's probably going to be the, the faster way. Um, in my beta tank over here that has the, um, didn't have high phosphates, but it did have hair algae. Um, the route I took with that one was is I just put like it's a fluval spec five gallon and the route that I took with that one was is I just threw five ghost shrimp in there and they just started eating away at all of it so that's a more natural way to do it I just didn't do it in this tank because um, my angel would have killed him the Siamese algae eater or my megalodon in here the thing is huge it's like almost eight inches um, he would have killed him and eat him um, and the discus would have did the same thing. Um, if you notice, my discus isn't here, here because he passed away. Um, little side note, that, la that discus you saw in, saw in there and this angelfish were the bullies of my angels and discus groups. Um, and they just killed off everything except one. One angelfish is the one at, at the tank of my work. But the discus killed off all the other discus. The angelfish killed off all the other angels. And it was just them two. And it was just, you know... It was a battle, but not a battle royale. It was just two men enter, one man leaves. And unfortunately, it was my discus, um, which I bought that fish for 60 bucks, opposed to that one, which was 549 you know. But it is what it is. So um, I'm not going to get rid of him just because I don't want that to be somebody else's problem. He just now has a penthouse, <laughs> really. But anyway, going back to high phosphates and how to uh, keep up with this, um, before it gets too out of control. Um, keep your phosphates low. Uh, if you notice a lot of hair algae, a lot of black beard algae, start uh, reduced feeding. Because again, usually um, that's the main culprit, culprit for anything with us is we're overfeeding because we love to watch our fish eat. So uh, roll back the feeding schedule a little bit. Um, right now, this guy's only getting fed once a day. Um, so, and I, I limited the amount that I give them now. Also, use a higher uh, quality of food. You know, I, um, for instance, I use Sea Kim food. I use Hikari. I've used North Finn. Um, usually the cheaper brand foods are going to give you issues um, with algae, with ammonia, with um, just other things in it. So kind of stay away from the cheaper foods. Um, the other thing is test your water source. Um, 
and, and, and age your water, because that's what I do. Um, which I have a video coming on, uh, up, up about how I age my water. But I don't really have to test my water because I age it for a couple days. Um, some people do a week. I don't like going a week, but um, I age it. But if you don't have the time or the room to age your water, um, test it before it goes in the tank. Um, sometimes tap water phosphate levels could be up to one part per million. You know, there's just something that happens in water. So kind of keep that in mind. If you do have high phosphates in your tap water that you're about to dechlorinate and put in there, um, I would go from 40%, probably down to 10 to 15% a week. Um, don't, cause you're just reintroducing more phosphates in here. You're just, you're continuing the cycle. You're not ending the cycle. But at the end of the day, just stay on schedule with changing your carbon. Stay, uh, stay on schedule with your dosing. Stay on schedule with your cleaning, with your water changes. Um, and once all of these things, once that schedule is, is set and you're, you're right there, you, you have stayed on schedule, you will notice your false rate levels coming down. You will notice your algae going away. Because right now, the reason why you have algae is because it's out competing for the nutrients in the water. And we don't want that. Um, algae will always out compete plants for um, the nutrients. So, but if you stay consistent with your water changing, with your cleaning, with your rinsing of your media, with your dosing, your plant dosing, it will go away. Now it's gonna take time. You don't wanna just do it all at one time. Just keep that in mind. It's baby steps. Be patient. So, hope this helps. Hope you can learn from my mistakes. And as always, thanks for watching.